The definition of separately derived systems is a really important one, and it's one that a lot of people misunderstand. So a separately derived system is a power source that is not a service. Now, the definition of service is the subject of the next video, but, but let me just quickly say this. You can only get a service from a utility, all right? So services come only from utilities. If you have a generator, that's not a service. If you have a, a customer-owned transformer or whatever, that's not a service, okay? So the service can only come from utility. So it's a power source that's not the utility service. And the power source has no direct connection to the circuit conductors of another system other than through grounding and bonding connections. All right, so here in the photograph, of course, we're looking at a transformer and that is certainly the most common type of separately derived system. So why is it a separately derived system? Well, because there is no connection between the two, between the primary and the secondary. It's all done through magnetic induction. Now, I'm gonna drop a link in, in below in the video that shows how transformers work. It's a video I showed where I, I have my homemade transformer, I got a couple of coils of wire, and we'll figure exactly how transformers work. If you haven't seen that video, uh, do yourself a favor, click on the link below and watch how a transformer works. Then a separately drive system is going to make perfect sense to you. So a transformer works from magnetic indu uh, induction, like I said. You've got a coil of wire, you energize it, you put another coil of wire near it, and it excites or it induces a current onto the other system. Now again, that's, the, that's just the quick down and dirty version. If you want the whole thing, click below. So a transformer is a separately derived system. There's no connection between the primary and the secondary other than through grounding and bonding connections. You know, if you think about it, you know, on the utility side, which would be like, you know, the 480, right? So we got the utility side, we bring it in the, to the primary of the transformer. We've got a green wire that supplies it. We connect it to the metal parts of our transformer. And then we generate a new system, right? Maybe a 240 volt or a 12208 volt system. And of course, we're going to have a green wire on that system that goes to the metal parts and goes to the first system's disconnect. So ultimately, the two are connected to each other through green wires. But that's not the type of connection that we're talking about, right? No direct connection to the circuit conductors of another system other than through grounding and bonding connections. So a transformer is a separately derived system. However, an auto transformer, or what we call in the field a buck and boost transformer, that is not a separately derived system because it doesn't work the same way. With, a, with an auto transformer, there actually is a connection between the primary and secondary. So here I've got some auto transformers that we're go, using to go from 240 down to 208. And as you can see from my little cartoon-like drawing, uh, there is a connection. You've got the 240 volt coil of wire and you connect to a, like a portion of it and you get 208 volts out of it. So that has a direct connection, therefore it's not a separately derived system. A normal transformer doesn't have that connection. It's two coils of wire that are side by side or on top of each other and the connection is done just through magnetism. What about a generator? Is that a separately derived system? Well, the answer is sometimes. But here's what's important. It has nothing to do with the generator. It has everything to do with the transfer switch. Uh, I know it used to surprise people when I was inspecting. Somebody would call me out and, and meet me for a generator inspection, like on a big commercial project. And they, they had installed the generator. This happened a few times. And the electrician would meet me on site and they'd say, well, let's go look at the generator. And I'd, and I'd stop them and say, you know what? I, I really can't look at the generator first because I don't know what I'm looking at at the generator until I look at the transfer switch. The transfer switch determines how you wire the generator because the transfer switch determines whether or not your generator is a separately derived system. And here's what I mean by that. Take a look at the picture. This transfer switch switches all three hots and the neutral. So because it switches the neutral, then there is no connection between the generator, which is on one side of the switch, and the utility, which is on the other side of the switch. That is a separately derived system. So if I'm switching the neutral, or if there's no neutral at all, then that would create a separately derived system. Now, what does that mean when it comes to the generator? Well, 
That means you have to connect it neutral to frame at the generator and you have to create a grounding electrode system, a couple of ground rods or, or whatever else would be appropriate. So if it's a separately drive system, then you follow 250.30A and you have to ground the system, you have to put in a system bonding jumper, you have to do all of that stuff. But again, the transfer switch is what's going to determine that. Here's a transfer switch at a house and it does not switch the neutral. You can see that the neutral is solid. It doesn't go through the switch. Now, if we read the definition one more time, a power source that's not a service, so maybe a generator, that has no direct connection to circuit conductors of another system. Well, we'll look at the transfer switch. There is a direct connection. Obviously, the two neutrals are going under the same terminal bar. That means the generator that is uh, operated through this transfer switch is not a separately derived system. So what does that mean? Well, that means that connecting it neutral to frame at the generator is not only not required, but would actually be a violation. It would be a violation of 250.24A5, off the top of my head, uh, 250.142 as well, I think. Uh, so you're not allowed to connect it neutral to frame there because you've already done it at the service. And if we did it, we would be putting the neutrals and equipment grounds in parallel. So you have to figure out, do you have a separately derived system first? And that's going to determine how you wire your generator. Separately derived systems, uh, a lot of people think that like if you have a detached garage, you know, your house, your house and it supplies a detached garage, it's like, oh, well, that's a separately derived system. No, it's not. It's just a panel. It's a separate building. That doesn't mean it's a separately derived system. A separately derived system is a different power source. All right, that's what a separately derived system is. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.